So there are three differential diagnoses. The first is different time in segment syndrome. Here are the characteristics. The infantine nystagmus syndrome can happen in binocular form. The amplitude between the two eyes usually is similar. The movement of the nystagmus can be horizontal or in rare form vertical and also torsional. There are a lot of distinctive waveforms for the infantine nystagmus syndrome and the research says there are at least 12 waveforms. But the most common for the infantine nystagmus syndrome is pendular and also jerk. The nystagmus can dampen by convergence. They can also be abolished during sleeping or when in attempt to visual task. They can also increase the nystagmus by fixation time. The nystagmus person can adopt abnormal head posture and they will have no oscillopsia unless in very rare condition they will have oscillopsia. They usually can be associated with structural disease and also ocular anomalies such as albinism, aneuridia, retinal dystrophies, optic nerve hyperplasia or congenital problems such as congenital cataracts. Another two differential diagnoses which are albinism and Latin manifest nystagmus. Nystagmus in albinism show many similarities to what can be observed in idiopathic nystagmus syndrome. The characteristics of the nystagmus are bilateral, conjugate, horizontal, waveform showing accelerating slow phase, waveform and intensity changing with the case direction. The characteristic of manifest latent nystagmus are horizontal, jerk, bilateral, dampen with adduction, nystagmus become more apparent when the one eye is covered and AHP may be presented. Diagnosis of albinism was confirmed by the existence of a three sign iris trans illumination, present of asymmetrical hemispheric VEP respond on monocular stimulation and macular hypoplasia. Manifest latent nystagmus happens when there is a disruption of binocular vision during visual development. It almost always associated with the congenital squint syndrome and condition that cause unilateral loss of the vision during visual development. The manifest component of nystagmus is obvious when the both eyes are open. The latent component increase in nystagmus amplitude is only revealed when the one eye is occluded. Albinism can be divided into two which are oculocutaneous albinism characterized by hypopigmentation of the skin, eyes and hair. Ocular albinism only involve eyes. The definition for infantile nystagmus syndrome is Based on a classification of eye movement abnormalities and strabismus, infantile nystagmus syndrome, which previously called as congenital nystagmus and motor and sensory nystagmus, is an infantile onset ocular motor disorder which characterized by involuntary oscillation that are typically bilateral, uniplanar, horizontal, torsional, pendular or jerk with increasing velocity slow phase. Infantile nystagmus syndrome also defined as a combination of several types of nystagmus each representing dysfunction in one subsystem of ocular motor system and having characteristic waveform. In different individuals, they may appear at birth or in early infancy. For prevalence, it can happen to 1 over 1,000 to 1,500 children. Men is more dominant compared to female. One of the study is conducted in a Swedish population on 1971. The findings found the prevalence of infantile nystagmus syndrome were 1 in 1,000 for males and 1 in 2,800 for females. The recent study, published on 2009, setting in Lanchester and Rutland, United Kingdom. The objective of the study was to estimate the prevalence of all forms of nystagmus except transient vestibular nystagmus. The study involved a hospital-based survey, include all hospital specialists, general practitioners, community optometrists and teachers for the visually impaired were invited to spread the information to patients that had nystagmus for them to participate in this study. Findings of this study show the prevalence of infantile nystagmus syndrome type only was 14 per 10,000 population in children and adults. 
Within ethnic groups, nystagmus was significantly dominant in the white European population than in Asian population. This study showed the increased prevalence of nystagmus compared to previous reported study. So, the management participation, we have two options. The first option is spectacle, where it used for correction of refractive error and improved visual equity. So, the best choice of glasses for this patient was plastic, small, and round shape of frame, while the material of lens were high index, aspheric, and multifocal lens. All this criteria is important in order to decrease glasses weight and minimize the associated optical aberration. Besides, for accessory, patient can use glass strap for secure the glasses in place. Second option was contact lens. It also used for correction of reflective error and improved visual equity. Contact lens also offers several advantages over glasses including damping of nystagmus, reduced optical aberration, and increased peripheral visual field. And for this patient, we will recommend customized contact lens, which is silicon hydrogenatory lens, as patient have the high aesthetic for the both eye. And for modality, patient can use frequent displacement, as patient can use for three months, and the parameter based on patient base curve and diameter. So the other management for nystagmus patient are surgery and pharmacological. Number one is surgery to reduce the intensity of the nystagmus in order to increase foveation time or shift the gaze position with the lowest nystagmus frequency, which is null zone, to the primary position and to decrease or eliminate the abnormal head posture. The presence of strabismus and abnormal head posture are indication for surgery, but the patient which has good binocular vision function and alignment in primary Primary position are not accepted as the candidates. There are four types of surgery, which is Keston Bounce Edison, four muscle recession, and the last one is tenotomy of the rectus muscle. Number two is a pharmacological, which is considered for acquired cases in order to decrease the complaint related to oscillopsia.